Like all great video games, Cubert had his own TV show. Yeah, I hope he doesn't do anything stupid. Which had absolutely nothing to do with the amazing games and was clearly given just enough of a budget to pass off as a Saturday morning two season advertisement for what really mattered. And that's the game. I'm ready for anything. I don't mean to sound bitter, but this show's up there with Super Mario Bros. Super Show and Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog as far as quality goes, but lacks what I'd call the 90s charm of either. <laughs> Bitch, what do you think, Cucumber Nose? We pulled out all the other nails. <laughs> Maybe it's just because this one was made earlier. Maybe it's because Cubert's story doesn't lend itself to this sort of thing. Maybe it's because hopping along cubes in an effort to protect your last bottle of cherry coke wasn't enough for the writers. But I mean, why is Coily a gangster of all things? Why do they live in a modern day, well, modern day for the 80s, city? Whose idea was it to call Cubert a noser? Hey, pretty noser, wanna go surfing with me? And why on Q World does Cubert have a girlfriend? Okay, maybe scratch that last one. But you guys get me, right? If fans love something for its high pedestal in one media, why would you ever want to use it in another one? Fair point. I'm done arguing. Let's get back to backtracking. So now having it unlock two blocks by getting our score high enough, not exactly sure on the numbers, but whatever, we can walk on two blocks now! Yay! So this should look familiar, it's the stage we just came from. Only now we have to change the blocks twice, a la level 2 from classic mode. I mean, I'm glad that they actually took the idea and just didn't forget about it completely, but it does seem a bit odd to just reuse a stage and throw it together here. Maybe I'm just misjudging it, but whatever. Bottom line, this is just a nice way to extend the game, and furthermore, if you really want to care about score or anything, these extra areas that you can access by unlocking two blocks now offer a lot more options as far as score potential goes. So with that out of the way, we can just continue on as is, I guess you could say, and nothing changes about any other level. However, a lot of times you'll notice that instead of just being able to walk on two blocks, the two blocks themselves actually change into regular looking blocks that fall after you've walked off them. I don't know. And here's another bonus stage. This one took me a while to figure out the actual pathway, but uh... It's not too hard once you know what you're doing. I'm not sure if I mentioned it already, but the uh, trick to these bonus stages is that you have to sort of form yourself a pathway so that you'll be able to backtrack without having to dead-end yourself. Really, that's a nice puzzle in its own right, and I really do enjoy these bonus rooms. It's just a shame you don't get anything extra for actually completing them. Just ten more points, I guess. Still, very nice accomplishment. Now sometimes, much like in the first level, we can unlock a lot more than just a bonus room by unlocking two blocks. In fact, this is one of the most complicated stages in Z-Law's dimension. Again, not that that's a bad thing at all. It's Actually, this is probably one of my favorite levels. Uh, just because now there's a lot more to explore. In fact, the unpredictability of uh, where these red balls are falling is actually part of the fun of it. Um, this stage in particular, they, they all bounce in unison, and it's, it, it's just really cool to watch, and even cooler to play. Especially if you're a risk taker like me, in which case a lot of this will end up being a fair challenge, actually. A fun kind of fair challenge, actually, which is 
rare for games that came out during this era. I mean, even Super Magnetic Neo had its fair share of, uh, that. So, honestly, I don't know. Uh, cheap deaths or no, this game is, this game is fun. Anyway, from there, again, the portal will just take you back to the main hub area, and you can just go on your way. And no extra octopuses spawn either, so that's, that's kind of nice. Now these two blocks, while I was busy distracted by salmon, um, I failed to mention the fact that there were a bunch of two blocks here. These act a lot like the score blocks in that you can collect 100 points for every time you hop on them. You can hop on them three times for 300 points each, and they're really cool like that. Um, I would recommend getting them out of the way first so that Sam doesn't screw you over later, but whatever. Fairly easy. Um, I'm glad they added in these little extra bonus things. That just means you have to do well. Anyway, in Zila 4, we had this two block over here that led to a uh, Q-Disc of all things. Never really explained as to why Q-Discs are suddenly uh, teleporters, but... Oh yeah, Coily, you can't reach me. Nah, 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 oh yeah, teleporter. To another's bonus room. This one is actually... I don't know. It looks complicated, but it's honestly not. It's actually, again, kind of fun, actually. Honestly, I have nothing to say about this. I have a running gag about Cherry Coke going through this Let's Play, and I don't even know where that's going. We'll see. Anyway, in uh, stage five, right off the bat, you uh, spawn right next to this two block up here, and this is another really interesting stage. First of all, the camera swung over for once, and doesn't this kind of look like that area from Zila 6? I don't know, something about it seems like the first area we entered there. Maybe I'm seeing things, but uh, whatever. It's enough of a variation that I don't mind it too much. Plus, the uh, rate at which the red balls are falling down in this place is actually kind of challenging. It's a wide open area though, that's uh, something I really do enjoy about this game overall is the uh, variations between how narrow the platforms are. In this case, you got like a width of three to dodge all this stuff. Later levels, especially the really late levels, you're gonna notice that uh, things are gonna start really slimming down. And the final two block we couldn't access before is in uh, Zila 6. And as long as I don't die before I reach it, should be fairly easy to see that uh, this one is also turned into a regular block for some un completely unknown reason. And this is an identical clone of, I believe, the second stage we went to in Zila 6. The only difference being that instead of 100 point blocks down at the bottom, it's just more things that we have to turn twice. Also, uh, with the, uh, with the 100 point blocks being in different places, it's actually a lot harder to dodge the octopi, if you're an idiot. Nah, honestly, this stage, uh, something about the way that the, this stage is set up just confused me as a kid, and apparently still does. Maybe I just suck at pre-planning and whatnot, but, uh... You can always hide in the top uh, square where you started, and then you don't have to actually worry about uh, these enemies spawning on top of you or even running into you. There is no way they can reach you from that very top middle square. Cube, sorry. Jeez. Of course, if you're an idiot like I am, eh, just reaching the areas that are right in front of you is kind of hard. Anyway, this teleporter will take you back to the main room. However, when you go back and try to complete the stage that you uh, came from before, this happens. You, you can still see that the teleporter is there, right? I mean, it, it hasn't changed at all. At all. In fact, you can still... Hang on. <sighs> go fake pausing actually hurt me there. Anyway, you can still go in. And it will still be completed. And you can continue going through them ad nauseum until, like me, you run out of lives. Anyway, let's skip on to the new stuff now. 
So now that we've completed Zila, we can move on to the triplets. No, honestly, they have absolutely no names. They're just the triplets. Which is fine, because... Yeah. It's cool levels. I think Hubert just ate that one. I know he's not quite the murderous, psycho-rampaging monster that Kirby and Pac-Man are, but uh, we'll see by the end of this world. Anyway, this definitely looks a lot different than your average Hubert level. Um, you'll notice that, uh, especially starting with the triplets here, things are gonna start looking really different. And this is the whole reason why I've always been so excited by this adventure mode. Um, here we're in some sort of, like, mountain climbing area. I, I don't even know what this is, it's just really cool. Yes, Texty, I know, it's, it's literally just a bunch of cubes with some nice graphics on them, but there is something so fascinating about this idea. Anyway, unlike Zila, every single stage will lead right into the next one, so there is none of this, uh... Uh, just go back into a teleporter and end up with another- No, you, ju you just go through the stages in the order they want you to. Also, red balls have been replaced by rocks for some reason in this level. I guess just to fit in with the, uh, big, epic, mountain-climbing motif that they got going. Anyway, I'm sure you've already, uh, caught on to this, but, uh, in order to unlock the last block and lead into the next section of the mountain, you have to first clear the rest of the stage. While this doesn't really matter much, it is pertinent to actually, you know, choosing your route good, I guess. Anyway, the higher you get in the mountain, the redder the platforms are going to get, which is to suggest that we're climbing up to the mouth of a volcano. It's a little hairy, but uh, I like the idea, honestly. It's it's quite the creative level, and again, we haven't seen anything like this in Cubert ever before. Mostly, it's just, what, colorful cubes floating in space? No, this is, this is like, this is a plot. This level has a vision. I don't know where I'm going with this. Just, just, just bear with me as I totally gush over these levels. Anyway, uh, normally in a level like this, the triplets that we saw earlier would appear at the top of the mountain and hop around, and each one does different effects depending on which triplet it is. I'll get more into that as it becomes more applicable. However, um, just from a general standpoint, it's really fun to uh, try to catch the triplets, and they're each worth, I think, successively 100, 200, and 300 points. Also, because the two blocks are now possible for us to step on, they're also mandatory for us to step on in order to complete this stage. Considering that we can, why not just step on the two block? But of course, since we still can't step on threes, there's no need to complete the next section. Although we will be getting to that later. Anyway, every stage in the triplets domain is some unique new environment. Rather than just being a different shape swirling in the background, first we went mountain climbing, now we're in some Indian camp or something. I I don't know. This this mode just plays off of every single stereotype under the book and it's hilarious. Now, I don't believe Green Triplet over there has any actual uh, effect on uh, which uh, uh, Tiki Head thing spits the arrows. However, in my experience, 1 and 2 will always sort of do this weird rhythm thing where 1, 2, and then they're going to split uh, 1, 2, and then after one more, I believe they're together? Something, whatever. The idea is that the top two are going to be spitting the most. Third one down spits occasionally, 
And, um, the last one I've never seen go. Maybe I just completed it too fast. Anyway, we can see the triplets just hopping around, but I honestly don't think they're affecting what's going on at all. They're just literally there for decoration. This is also the part of the game when the game actually starts having fun with itself. And you're gonna see that's gonna become a trend as time goes on. Really love these levels. Love the river graphic too. I mean, very early Dreamcast work there. I don't think that's anything praiseworthy, but it's cool looking. In a retro y kind of way, I guess? Anyway, same rules apply here. You don't have to actually complete a certain block to finish, gates just lower. However, they do start playing it up here a bit. You're gonna notice in a second. Yeah, yeah, both both of the balls, and now Coily, moving really fast, too. Why? Uh, it's never really explained, and frankly, I couldn't care less. I guess maybe he's just jacked up on caffeine because he couldn't get to that cherry coke in time. Now here's where things get interesting. This is a pretty big level. And so far, our Tiki Head friends have been hopping straight down. They've been behaving like red ball enemies. However, here, they just sort of hop around haphazardly. You might as well compare them to the octopi from uh, Zila's domain, except that here they're, I don't know. Something about just the way they move is an incredibly erratic pattern that I can't follow for the life of me. My suggestion, steer clear, because you never know when they're going to take a turn, so just stay out of the way and you should be fine. And honestly, unless you hop off the edge like a complete idiot, these guys are pretty easy to, you know, hop around, dodge, and whatnot. And I have no idea what just happened. The world blew up or something. Yeah, I, I don't know. Anyway, snag the triplets here. Easy uh, 600 points. And a bonus stage, also remarkably easy. No, no, seriously, it's just a spiral. Or you could, I don't know, approach it anyway, and you should be good. Honestly, if that's your first bonus, you're going to get it, pretty much. I think I screwed up on that once because I was trying to be creative, and whenever I try to be creative, bad things start to happen, as I'm sure you guys know. Anyway, that was, that was literally it. That's pretty fast, right? Anyway, I'll join you for the Triplets 3 starting next part. See you then! Like, right! Now I can can this totally awesome can and meet some really foxy surfer dudes! Just... why?